Hello again, and welcome to Kit Bash Collections. This is Anthony, and today I'm going to be doing an overview of some various projects I've been working on and some new items that we've acquired these past few weeks that I thought were actually pretty cool and I wanted to share them with y'all. So, the items we got uh, are for the benefit of the U.S. military history timeline and the world history timeline as well as the G.I. Joe Adventure Team and Vintage G.I. Joe and just some other future projects that I want to work on um, that I just that I have been working on I just haven't gotten around to completing them just yet but I have been collecting various things to make this collection even more cool first off we've um, we've needed Native Americans of different sorts of tribes for our United States military history timeline and we needed to fill in spots across the early days of America and going to uh, basically the 19, early 1900s so looking around um, online or specifically eBay we found a solution for more outfits and gear and accessories for our 1-6 scale Native Americans. This figure right here is a good example of the kind of detail we're going for when it comes to um, displaying the, the Native Americans throughout uh, the, at least the United States military history timeline, uh, whether they were allies or enemies. Um, or even against the French and Spanish and British and whoever else was in America, North America and South America at the time, but specifically North America. Trying to find accessories for our Native Americans throughout the United States military history timeline, we stumbled across these Lone Ranger Rides Again accessory sets. And just straight up accessories. First it started out with just finding basic stuff like these feathers right here or that necklace and or that bow and arrow or that it started with this buffalo hide actually this buffalo hide right there because um, I wanted to make this guy right here with one of these figures and I realized you know just doing the research I realized this was actually an actual brand from 1973 called Lone Ranger Rides Again. Although they're for 10 inch figures, they will work perfectly for our 12 inch figures. With finding these accessory sets online, I uh, found this horse, or this pony, and this horse at uh, an antique store here locally in Las Vegas. And this one, is actually for, if I'm not mistaken, and it actually is for these Lone Ranger Rides Again sets because it is smaller. It's, so it's actually not a pony, but it's a it's a, a horse size for a 10 inch figure. So compared to a 12 inch figure, it looks like a pony. Now, I originally thought all these sets, besides this figure, I thought all these sets and and this horse, I thought it was all maybe marks made by Mark's Toys. Uh, for instance, these are so this is these are from the 1960s. I believe this Native American and this horse the saddle is not but these would be 12 inch marked toys While researching what this toy brand was uh, Apparently it's made by Gabriel toys which was, uh, like I said, in 1973, I guess these came out, or at least these are dated 1973 in the backs of the boxes. But this is Hubley or Hubley, probably Hubley. And this one's called the Tribal Pow Wow, which is pretty cool. It actually has real feathers for the, uh, the war bonnet, and I 
I guess this goes all the way down his back. Little buffalo head, a mask, which we could probably use uh, for some sort of South American Aztec or Mayan sort of thing, because we do have some of those guys up there too. Uh, at least the Spanish conquistadors would have faced those guys down way down south. Uh, we got a pouch here. Looks like a bear claw necklace or some sort of some sort of claw necklace. Uh, <laughs> looks like a peace pipe. And uh, this is a hatchet. <laughs> and this is um, some kind of club. And we have a drum with a mallet and a belt, which is pretty cool. And just but judging by the, the the size, we don't have any of these actual 10-inch figures that go with these Gabriel Toys Lone Ranger Rise Again sets. But just judging by the, the actual 10-inch figures compared to the actual pieces of the accessories online or by, or by pictures, they look like they're going to work perfect for these. Of which we... I didn't realize it. I always thought these, like these horses were... Um, Marks toys, which I'm, I'm still iffy on it whether Gabriel toys and Marks were co-mingled or whatnot. But I, I'm sure I'll figure that out at some point and let y'all know. But we have this uh, this horse, which goes I think goes part of this line, and if not, this actually might be a pony for Marks toys. So I'll have to figure that out. But I think I've seen this one as a. Um, a Lone Ranger Rides a Gun Horse on eBay or such. That's how I know about this. Which is cool because the other day when we ordered, uh, not the other day, but a couple weeks ago when we ordered this stuff online, I went to an antique store and found this horse for a very good price along with that horse. And, you know, these people don't really know what they have, but I immediately recognized this is a horse for Gabriel Toys Lone Ranger, Lone Ranger Rides Again. Uh, figures and this is one six one six scale which is 12 inches high so at the time that these were out these were being produced as well which is cool because uh, it's in okay condition however the the saddle that was already on here I don't know if it's glued on there or not uh, which it it doesn't feel like it is um, which is cool because I could take it off if I need to but the saddle came with it, and obviously, you know, obviously I have to extend these stirrups to go down to actually put the GI just foot in there. So I'm gonna have to do a little work on him. And uh, what's cool about these Mark's horses, real quick, is we actually use these quite often through our collection. That's an Action Man horse, but we use these uh, Mark's horses like that right there throughout our collection, um, even going all the way over there to. Uh, those guys right there, Patton and Pancho Villa, and we use them for whatever, whoever needs horses, and uh, they're usually cavalry guys. And um, right here is a good example of two Mark's horses that I'm working on, trying to figure out how to get this German field kitchen attached to these two Mark's horses right here. So it's pretty cool. They they're pretty cool. And you can usually find them on eBay for a decent price. Uh, just, just watch out for quality on these things because there's a lot of sometimes there's a lot of glue, glue marks or melt marks. And having just researched this stuff, I um, realized we actually already had a Lone Ranger wagon with the horse. And obviously, I already knew we had a Marks, we had a Marks wagon, but I didn't, I didn't realize what this was. I, I, I thought it went to that series, which would be Johnny West series, I believe. Yeah, but apparently, this is a Lone Ranger wagon. It's just missing its little top part, like the other wagon has. So it's pretty cool, uh, as you can see over here. We do have some other figures, various tribes that we haven't set up yet. Uh, some other Native Americans on a actually a homemade canoe, which a lot of this Native American stuff I'm going to do on a separate video. Um, especially as I gather some more accessories and 
actual Native American bodies, of which these 10 inch figures are going to, they, they're going to work. So if you have a 12 inch figure, <clears throat> one six scale, he's actually the equivalent to a six foot man. So if you have a 10 inch figure um, next to him, it's still going to work. So um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be cool to have those figures because they seem to be abundant and they come with some cool outfits that are like buckskin material, which is going to be cool. Stuff like that. Uh, that's a homemade loincloth, by the way. Just made out of a little piece of leather. <laughs> but these marks ones, they obviously just have no detail. I've been thinking about maybe painting one of these guys someday uh, to see what it would look like. And I imagine the painting would look similar to this, this saddle right here. Going back to these accessory kits real quick. Um... As I mentioned earlier, it was because I saw this hide on eBay that I was like, wow, that's really cool. Um, and then, as I explained, everything else just looked really cool. So instead of, instead of buying these little pieces one at a time, which uh, what happens is when people, if they just find the little pieces and try to sell it, they sell it for... An inflated price so even if they did have this set uh, I don't think they would remove it from a box if they w wanted to sell that stuff but what happens is they they'll have a little pieces just the separate pieces for an inflated price so to be honest I've seen some pieces within these these boxes one piece that uh, cost the entire price of one of these boxes so uh, just be mindful of, um, of what you're of what you're spending your money on uh, we got a great deal for these so and and uh, apparently the Lone Ranger rides against stuff is very abundant anyway So they have other cool accessories like teepees and canoes and whatnot, but just um, Just taking a quick look and then I'll be moving on but you know, I guess That's that's what's on the back of these boxes uh, as well as I'm gonna I'm going to be making a separate video on on these uh setting these figures up i just need uh more bodies more outfits and uh more accessories so but i think we found a pretty good solution to our u.s military history native american uh, figures action figures Next up, we have figures that we needed to get specifically for the American Revolution, part of the United States history timeline, and the French and Indian, French and Indian War era for the American timeline as well. I'm just going to grab this rod right here. For instance, this figure right here. He's uh, a kit bash figure that we've used um, different items as as an accessories and parts of the uniform from different toy companies uh, to create him custom custom made. So I have a separate video. I'm gonna have a separate video on him and uh, how I create. I'm ha how I'm creating him as well. This figure is from the American Revolutionary War. And he's a French soldier who is allies with the American soldier fighting the British soldier. Of which this figure right here is from the French and Indian War French and Indian War, and he is a French soldier who would have been fighting against the British colonists and British soldiers uh, before the American Revolution. Once again, through eBay, we uh, found what we needed for a decent price. Uh, in this case, these are Soldiers of the World 
action figures from the Revolutionary War. This is an African American private from Rhode Island, which is a great addition to the American history timeline. And then I needed, what I'm trying to do here is, I'm, I found this fife and drums uh, last year on eBay. And these are the drums. And there's the little fife with the music sheets, which is, I want to see how close I can actually go with this thing. Yeah. So there's a music sheet, if anybody knows how to... <laughs> read that I want to make a two-man fife and drum team uh, either out of a red coat two red coats or two blue coats now from the movies and reenactments that I've seen uh, the Americans during the American Revolutionary War would wear red coats the in, the musicians that is on the battlefield they would wear red coats and the, the British musicians would wear blue coats. And that's in order so that the opposing armies, could they, they could still communicate with their, their troops and commanders or whatever using the fife and drum music as a way to communicate. And I guess through respect and honor and mutual agreements, they just, the, they wouldn't kill, they would, they wouldn't target the musicians, uh, you know, I guess if you're wearing the colors of the opposing army, the opposing army doesn't, is not going to shoot that guy and vice versa. So, but if I'm going to take the route of putting the Americans in the British uniform or another British uniform, but just the British colors, I have to uh, invest into another British set. And, um, uh, of which these soldiers of the world figures, these are from the late nineties, um, like ninety six, maybe ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, maybe early two thousands. But that's that's the time frame those figures came out. And by the way, this um, drum is actually handcrafted and handmade and three D printed as well. Uh, from a seller uh, on eBay so I have two other drums that I, I bought from this the seller and they uh, the, each drum comes with the sticks and a little fife and the music music sheet but the sling is separate the sling to uh, hold the drum onto the figure is, is it's called separate so I was like, well, I, I don't think it's the right st style of sling for what I'm trying to do anyway, because the sling hangs across his, his neck like this, and the, and the drum would be right here in the front, which I actually think I need the drum to hang on the side. Something like that. Um... I think it's going to look cool. It looks kind of big, but maybe if I scoot back a little bit. I think, it looks, I think it's going to look okay. But it might be a little oversized, but, you know, where else am I going to find an American Revolutionary War drum? This next figure is uh, by a brand, a toy company called D.I.D., of which we have uh, a few other figures of them throughout the room. But this one happens, happens to be from 2015, and he's a Napoleonic French Dragoon. Now this is more of your top-of-the-line, high-quality 12-inch action figure compared to um, Soldiers of the World, which are, you know, the bodies are more bulkier, the uniforms aren't as, ac you know, are as accurate. They're just little buttons, you know, little beads for buttons, these little straps. Nothing has any really detail on them. Uh, but they do have good head sculptures, which we change out the bodies of, which I've done with this figure right here. And this one over here. So, opening the figures box up, just right off the bat, 
I was just looking at the the buttons and all the shiny pieces I guess you could say to the figure and for good reason because they're all made out of metal so all the metal pieces on these these guns uh, they're actually metal uh, that's appears to be real leather leather boots and uh, I haven't I haven't grabbed this yet but I don't know if that's real wood or not uh, it might it may be plastic but even the helmet is it's real metal of some sort it's light but it's it's definitely metal I don't know about die cast but uh, the gun feels plastic, but these, yeah, those are that's a metal barrel, all right. So that's pretty cool. But the detail on the belt and on the buttons, so that's really neat. The detail in his eyes and his face and whatnot. It's really cool uh, compared to, you know, <laughs> the lower the lower scale figures. But nonetheless, uh, in detail that is, nonetheless they uh, they're all gonna work and it's gonna look it's gonna look great in the end. And this guy is actually a Confederate soldier, I believe. Soldiers of the world. I uh, found him at an antique store. The other day for once again a, a good price so uh, he belongs right over here with the confederate army fighting against the americans so this next segment is what i would like to call thinking outside the toy box and what i mean by that is using other products from other toy companies or simply building your own stuff um, or both to apply to your adventure team and vintage G.I. Joes and by apply of course I mean using these other toy companies toys uh, to go with your G.I. Joes or 1-6 scale G.I. Joes so starting over here this is actually a marks toy company firing cannon from the either the late 50s or early 1960s but they came out with various cannons even ones that are bigger than this and they all shot and basically what you would do is you would load your little shell in there you cock this hammer back right here and this this little metal piece right here holds that little hammer down and here's your trigger so you would push that which I'll do right now I don't have anything loaded maybe I can find something and it shoots um, this little guy obviously you know it'd be a small howitzer type style cannon uh, that they could easily attach to their their Jeep and just roll around with the, uh, of course, the the 1960s five star GI Joe Jeep, and these little holes here for or for the shells. So, marks. Uh, the next one is another marks item from the 1950s, I believe, maybe the early 60s, but early 60s. But this is another one that they had various um, types of the same kind of toy, just as this one. And what this is, is um, an anti-aircraft pom-pom gun. So what you do is you spin this right here. You, you hit you hand crank it. And it makes that sound. Well, it doesn't make that sound. These, these go back and forth and it makes a clacking sound. The only thing this this one in particular gets a little jammed in there so hopefully I'll figure out how to properly just turn this but uh, I'll demonstrate that right now <laughs> it's 
So it's pretty cool. You have to hold it, obviously, but they do sell other types with a better stand, and they look more solid. But um, this is definitely something I might, either I can create something new and attach this to something, or just leave it the way it is. But I think for this first gun ever that I've ever seen like this, and purchased and owned, I think I'm going to leave it like this. Um, but I had to add this little wire that comes like on the G.I. Joe's where they're tied down to the box that they come in. I had to add something here to keep the gun from just falling forward like that. So I just put that there and uh, it seems to work as a temporary solution for now. I don't know, for some reason it sounds so much louder in person, but it's a cool toy nonetheless. This next idea was actually going through the antique store and just spotting this little boat off in the distance um, on some shelf or whatever and just going over there and checking the price and it was like something that was very affordable and so we picked it up. My uh, the co-owner of the collection, my dad, he wants to put um, actual um, historical Navy, American Navy uh, guys from the 1700s or something like that into this little boat here. But I just uh, just put in the just putting everything in a way and organizing. I put this little GI Joe um, Navy sailor. Uh, in there just to show you the scale. How to put this little stand here just because he keeps falling over. But I think it looks pretty cool. And then he, uh, well, I found this little monkey from Hobby Lobby, so he works well <laughs> with what's going on here. But these little, these, uh, these little paddles here, they were actually gl glued to the seat. Both of them were actually glued to the seat. Oops. And um, I just had to pry them off. But what that did was it actually left a big old, you know, glue chunk mark. I guess I could have used a heat gun or something to pull it off, but that's easily repairable with just some putty or something. Because uh, I got to repaint those anyway, so it won't be that big of a deal. Just put some putty, sand it down, and repaint them. And I don't know if we want to repaint the boat just yet. I think it looks kind of cool, just the, the original, but I'll definitely, but obviously brown, dark brown or something like that would be more appropriate for the uh, what my dad's trying to do. But uh, <laughs> just in my imagination, this little guy is out there in the middle of the bay somewhere just scouting for submarines or something, anything. So he has his little waving flags here and his binoculars and his uh, little the monkey that jumped on board to keep him company. Here's another uh, good example of thinking outside the toy box. Like this little hovercraft, G.I. Joe hovercraft, um, is actually from the early 2000s. Uh, 2003, 2002 or so, somewhere in there, and I guess G.I. Joe came out with various different vehicles to just have, I guess, and they all kind of had these controls where you can, um, this lever turns on this fan, but this lever pushes it uh, forward or reverse, and you can steer, steer the little wheels in front of it with that wheel that wheel and then uh, this button if you push it down it shoots his gun so uh, all those little vehicles kind of do their own thing but I just happened to find this as well at the antique store and I wasn't sure if a G.I. Joe could actually fit in and I couldn't sit him down this way I, I, like I, put, I couldn't put his legs front ways like this so I had to just kind of kneel him down in there as best I could and especially with these Vintage style GI Joes. They they're not as they're not as articulate as uh, some modern figures can be. But 
I think this turned out kind of cool and maybe, uh, you know, I think it works. Let's see here. So I sh it should be on. This little, you do that, that fan starts spinning. And it has those little lights in there. Uh, obviously right now it's, it's, it has a different mode under here. If you were to flip it over, there's a switch that actually turns it into drivable mode. But right now it's just in, like in stationary mode. Uh, but back here on this side, this, uh, this button, if you push it, It manually starts up that uh, propeller or fan. Be a fan, and it too makes the colors. I guess. Yeah, it does. Let me try without these lights real quick. And this little button right here. It's a machine gun. So that's a cool little battle water hovercraft. That's pretty cool. Now this button right here, you hold it down, and it shoots this gun right here, of which I, I, I think a little Nerf dart comes out of there, which I don't have one, but as soon as I get one, I'll I'll fit it in there, and cause it, not, it sure does look like it's uh, that's exactly what it is, so. Once again, this little button, I guess it maybe accumulates the air pressure or something. Yeah, like some, maybe like some sort of suction and, and then it releases it somehow. So that's cool. Flipping the switch to driving mode. Let's, uh, let's see what it looks like. And in reverse. Well, the little vehicle is so long and it's so slow, it just, you can't really notice the changes when you turn the wheel, um, just going from here to there. So that's the G.I. Joe Navy uh, attack vehicle hovercraft. And I don't know if these things, if this one in particular, I know the other ones weren't. But I don't know if this was ever meant for one six scale, but um, you know it, it it obviously works. But I know the vehicles, the other vehicles that were like this style, were not for one six scale. So, and uh, it, there seems to be some sort of compartment, a little box that goes on the sides here. So I need to find a dart, and it should be good to go. And now that we got the GI Joe. Adventure Team Power Generator fired up. We've now got full power to our Adventure Team Command Center. Which I think looks pretty cool. Let's see what it is. Uh, I'm trying to get a hold of somebody. <laughs> that was pretty close to all their technologies in their little command center so far so just thinking outside the toy box with the adventure team this is actually like a V8 engine model that you, you assemble 
and it's powered by two AA batteries to a motor and it turns some it turns a shaft and gears and a belt and lights up as you saw the little pistons going up and down and a little fan turning so it's a cool idea it's just a little loud but it's all good um, over here this guy he's like a GI Joe um, what is it GI Joe convention I don't know what year but he's all clear however that light is not actually inside of him it's actually just a rod a light like that that I got at the dollar store and I just I figured it would look good for something and right before I filmed this you know I, I was like I remember I had this guy he looks cool as if the lights are going through him he's all hooked up to computers and stuff but this little light rod thing um, has a button right here so it has different settings off various settings only for a dollar there well, that's pretty cool the idea about the adventure team and in my little museum and creation of this action figure world I um, I've made this guy to be kind of like the leader of all the adventure team science and technology with our adventure team technology they have this little Cotswold collectible 3d printed um, arm device that has some sort of map and scanner and I don't know it looks like some sort of meter and maybe volume or something with buttons and whatnot uh, that would actually control this little drone right here and this little drone has a camera so both those items are items are from Caldwell collectibles 3d printed items so it's kind of cool and you know the adventure team is not all about military warfare they're always about um, others other kinds of interest as in this is an earthquake sensor or meter I can't remember what it's called but this is an original one from the 1970s and so they're all about a variety of technologies uh, from civil civil interest to military to even space as the adventure team is all about technology the Atomic Man is no longer the Atomic Man to me anymore. <laughs> he is some sort of machine. There is no man, there's no heart in this at all. It's just a machine with outer skin. <laughs> this one's missing his arm and missing fingers, but I guess he's up for his annual checkup. And so is that guy right there. But uh, what's cool is this is actually a Cotswold body, Cotswold Collectibles body uh, and they have these clear arms and legs but this is an original Atomic Man body which is pretty cool on its own uh, but the Cotswold Collectibles stuff is clear as well so and I just threw a, I got ordered a Atomic Man head and just put it on the body so it works out pretty good what our adventure team head scientist has been working on is what's called, a, what we call, a mule. And what it is, is basically just a flat pat platform with uh, the chair right on the flat platform with the tracks. And it would have a tow hook to tow stuff behind it. I got the idea 
from looking up various little like homemade tanks like which in real life and six foot person terms um they make homemade tanks and this is it looks, looks similar to something i saw and it's a completely different design though but it's i thought it looked so cool i thought i saw it on youtube so i was like i want i was wondering how to recreate recreate it uh, in my own fashion and own style um so what I did is I remembered when I was in middle school, I built one of these to, to my uh, track vehicle chassis kit, chassis kits. And the purpose of that was to turn it into uh, a World War II German Goliath, which it's packed with explosives and it's uh, a wire would go all the way out to the German of which he would push the, you know, I think it's one of those or maybe it was a button. I don't, I can't remember. But I turned one of these, it's powered by two AA batteries and a little motor. Um, I turned one of these into something like this. And I just covered it with a hard, I think it was like a hard paper or maybe, uh, it wasn't as hard as styrene, but it was something like that, something from Hobby Lobby. And I painted it gray. So it, I still have it somewhere, so it's in storage somewhere from long ago. But what I intend to do is to actually turn this to my attract vehicle kit into uh, a Goliath for the vintage GI Joes and cover it with the styrene plastic all the way across maybe paint a little white star in there and then have some styrene plastic as armor around for the wheels uh, similar to something like this and uh, it should look pretty good as a the United States Army Vintage G.I. Joe Goliath battery operated. When I was trying to figure out how to build something like this, um, I remembered these. And But the thing is with these little model kits, this little piece of wood is just far too small to sit a figure on. So uh, at Hobby Lobby, I bought this board. I think it's like four and a half inches by nine and a half inches long. And it's just a little wooden board. And then I and these little, these rods that go on the original vehicle, they're just too small. So I had to, uh, once again at Hobby Lobby, I bought some aluminum rods, um, which I can't remember the size of them right at the moment, but they they seem to fit for these wheels. So it worked out pretty good. Um, for the, to hold these wheels on, there's rods going all the way across the bottom. So, in order to put these wheels on, these ones, these orange ones right here, I had to replicate the original um, holder for these wheels. And I did that using styrene plastic and just measuring it out and drilling the holes as close as I possibly could to the original. So. It took me two, basically two models, not two models, but I needed extra track and wheels. So I ordered a separate um, Tamiya kit, which is, it just has the track and wheel set. So with these, with this, actually, yeah, this one and this one combined, I'm I'm building this and the problem I'm having though is the little engine that originally came with this is it's not strong enough to pull these entire tracks so let me turn it on so it's on and it, it is pulling them but there's no weight on it as soon as you put even the slightest bit of weight on it like just putting it on the surface it's just not enough there's not enough power, not enough torque or whatever. It's just not enough. It's not enough. What I did is I ordered a Tamiya a twin engine little motor set like this, a twin motor set. And they're, they're literally two motors that are just side by side connected. So I'm going to pop that in here to give this double 
power, double the strength to pull this. And hopefully it'll be enough strength to have uh, some more stuff added on, like this seat right here, which I found on eBay. It came with like a little, it's a one six scale little seat and it's kind of like a modern day fashion kind of seat or a retro kind of seat or something, I don't know. But I thought it would work perfect for um, this right here. When it came to trying to find the right seat, I even considered using this little one from that set. But I, I just, I just didn't really like it. And I didn't, and it really, I really didn't want to separate the original piece from the original gun that it goes to. And the, uh, the other seat is like actually way up here, that adventure team seat. I was considering using that as well or something like that, but it turned out to just be too big. So for, a, I mean, it, for a really great price, I was able to find this. It came with a desk and a little light and uh, it worked out perfect for what I need for this. Once this is all complete and finished, uh, I'm not gonna make a video on it. I'm just gonna give you an update on it later. So that's something to look forward to. But um, I'm, I am gonna paint the seat. I'm gonna paint all the wood. I think I'm gonna leave these, these wheels orange. I'm gonna paint everything else, basically the Adventure Team colors. Um, I'm thinking orange and orange and black obviously is already there. I'm not sure if I wanna do it in yellow, but I, I know I want the seat black. So that actually might just be orange. That, that would but <laughs> going back to the uh, the power this little switch right here the on and off switch which I believe makes it go forward and back which it actually does forward and back um, I want that to be on the side over here so it's as if it's like his little shift forward and reverse um, and then I'm gonna add a little uh, some sort of little st st steering wheel or joystick or something something simple that he can just drive the tracks with um, this will not be remote controlled once you turn it on it just goes forward or once you push that back it goes backward so with the twin engines hopefully they'll fit between his legs uh, without his feet being that without his feet touching sides here so I'm not sure if I want to put some sort of I think it might look cool but some sort of uh, bar like a crash bar like on uh, race cars or what or something like that around him um, to give him security should he uh, topple over or something which by the vehicle that I was referring to from YouTube actually did have those bars so it, it actually looks pretty cool now for the adventure team when it comes to powering their mule to us it, it runs off of two AA batteries but to them apparently it runs off of GI Joe adventure team mobile terrain vehicle turbo diesel fuel which goes into those is batteries slash diesel fuel holders <laughs> so we'll just put that there as if he's filling up now this is actually from eBay as well there's a, a certain um, seller out there who custom makes these things as you can see this is is made out of a what appears to be some sort of vegetable can and he added uh, all the accessories and decals to make it look like an actual adventure team mobile terrain vehicle turbo diesel fuel can and it even has a little gauge right here empty full you know I guess that's off and on pressure how much it releases off so that's pretty cool. Now with um, their new inventions and other various accessories that they now have, this is another one that I, I briefly showed on the original video. 
of this series. It's a Meccano. Um, Meccano is like a erector set, but it's just a more, I think it's more just simplified. It's not as complicated um, as crane right there, which is more complicated. It actually has running motors and gears and ropes and and uh, moving parts. But this one, uh, it's, you know, I think it's more for, you know, younger adults, young young adults, but younger kids to learn how to build more complicated stuff like that. And this one doesn't have any running motors, but it does have gears and moving parts. And what you would do is, let's see here, you're supposed to be able to move these back and forth. This is another one of those toys that you have to hold um, in order to do whatever it does. So pulling this lever back raises this right here, the, this front part, and I guess it's the scoop or the, the bucket. This one lowers and raises the entire thing. When I was looking for other toys and ideas when it came to thinking outside the toy box, um, as I was just researching online and looking around, I think what initially caught my eye were the colors of this Meccano excavator. And uh, they're already orange. And I like this light blue color. It's, it's cool and it matches the black and the silver everything else so uh, as a little mini excavator for the venture team uh, i think it looks and works pretty good a couple of projects that i've uh, been working on as well is uh, the nomora anti-aircraft artillery gun and this is something new. It's a Mark's um, some sort of spotlight that it had like a big old truck, and this was like the toad behind it. So it was a spotlight with this um, on this trailer. But it, it, besides the spotlight, I think that it had batteries in it. But um, this one, when I found this, I found this at an antique store as well a couple of weeks ago. For a very great price and because it was missing a spotlight now to overcome that and to get around that um, the original spotlight does light up I guess you just you turn the knob and then the spotlight comes up I try to look for them on eBay or that's pretty much the only place I can go to find any of this stuff but in order to <clears throat> compensate for that the missing that light I took an alternative route and ordered this um, five-star Jeep, G.I. Joe five-star Jeep, 1960s uh, searchlight. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the searchlight that goes onto the back on the trailer for the, the G.I. Joe Jeep. So um, sometimes you can find these things for an awesome price, which I did. And I'm going to, I, I don't need this for it, but I'm going to save this for later for something else. I don't, I don't know what just yet. Maybe, I don't know what just yet, but this, how, this, however, I'm going to attach this cord to AA batteries and <clears throat> to a little AA battery on and off switch. And just kind of rig it under here so you never see it. And then this uh, G.I. Joe spotlight will actually work once you push down the button. And uh, even though it's a Mark's trailer for a Mark's toy, you know, it's going to have the G.I. Joe logo. And it's going to look really cool. And it's going to be a great addition to the, well, now it's, it's G.I. Joe 
anti-aircraft gun, which is the, uh, the Nomura, Nomura tin toy from the 1950s, of which I think this is from the 1950s as well, and this spotlight would be from the 1960s. If you've seen the video I made on the repair of this toy, um, I, I took it all apart and figured out the problems to make to get it working again. But as an update, I uh, in the, the last video I made for this, I talked about adding a, a barrel with uh, an LED light because it was missing this barrel with the LED light. So what I went ahead and did is I went to the local uh, electronics store because I don't really know much about electronics, so I had to how to research this, how to hook up an LED light to a little wire into two little prongs into this toy. I mean, <laughs> fortunately it's simple enough to just hook those, those wires straight into it. So let me turn this off real quick. Now, the same idea of these, these two prongs going in there is, it's just like this this flashlight or this this searchlight for this toy and they have two prongs of which just slide right into there that's how you do that <laughs> but um right now <clears throat> i've got the light figured out you know i right now I, I was just noticing that when i shoot the gun this light little light turns on but if this if this mechanism is touching um, if this little light's on, basically this light won't turn on. And so I'm, I'm just going to have to kind of have to just see what's going on with this. But it, I think it's a pretty good feat that I've, I've gotten this far with the, the LED light. So now I just need a proper barrel to put on there. And I'll work out any kinks going on with this and get it back into a proper working order. So when the gun shoots, that blinks. Boop, boop. I'll be making update videos on the uh, specifically these two items, and once it's all said and done, they're going to be either towed separately or together. But this will be the spotlight to spot the um, aircraft in the sky while you have the r the radar right here to obviously see that they're coming in and you have the little radar dish and anti-artillery to shoot it down and and then you have the machine gun for uh, up close and personal in case the enemy gets that close and what's cool about these these um march toys or this vintage japanese nomura tin toy is that they're the same color as uh, the G.I. Joe stuff. So this is the marks, Not the marks, but they're the same color as like some of the vehicles and uh, you know more vehicles up there. And it's more specifically in a vintage style, going back to the G.I. Joe Five Star Jeep. So to have it, everything look. Uh, it's, it's the toys are not only vintage and they work, but they all look GI Joe U.S. Army colors. So I'll keep you posted on those. I ended up putting that uh, anti-aircraft gun in there, in this tower, of which let's test it out. Air raid. Everyone's on high alert. Airplanes are on the screen. Oops. This guy, he's trying to dial. He's not even looking at that. He's trying to figure out, like, what's wrong with this thing. 
will it work properly? But fortunately, they were able to make a makeshift barrel out of scratch real quick. He'll get it working. Now this guy, now that they know where the airplane is, close range, he forgot to turn his light on, but there he goes. Now he's got it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's all, it's all up in that guy's face. Distracted him. Now here in the command center, Everyone's on full alert. That machine guy is freaking out. He's trying to calm him down somehow. If not, he's gonna shoot him. <laughs> this guy over here, he's reading the, uh, trying to figure out where the enemy is on the map. But uh, apparently he can recharge anywhere on any of these. He's recharging lights. The uh, robot that's in this tower gives the okay that it's all clear and the enemy airplanes are retreating. Now that the uh, two enemy aircraft are flying away. Everything's calmed down here on the, uh, the home front. So, these past few weeks have been fairly productive, not just with collecting and researching and reverse engineering uh, but just thinking about just thinking outside the toy box what would work for our vintage G.I. Joes and our adventure team but that does include the world history timeline and military uh, U.S. military history timeline when it comes to these 10-inch, you know, accessory sets. When we do get those figures in, the 10-inch Native Americans, uh, they actually do come with various outfits, not just the buckskin, but various outfits, various different tribes. So that should be really cool. These two Native Americans... That I was using here just as a demonstration for accessories and the kind of accuracy we, we want to go for. Um, these are dog soldiers, the toy company dog soldiers. And he's a Pawnee warrior and he's a Cheyenne warrior. As well as this tower is World Peacekeepers along with this, uh, I guess it's an anti-aircraft gun as well maybe I'm not sure when it came to the idea about the the mule and the the goliath um, I knew I wanted a goliath I'm gonna paint it green with a little star armor but I knew I wanted a goliath for these vintage GI Joes because I mentioned earlier I had one um, that was actually for a science fair in middle school and I got first place. And uh, But it wasn't a Goliath. It, it looked like a German Goliath, but it wasn't a Goliath. It was actually an anti-mine um, remote controlled track vehicle that unmanned. So when it ran over the mine, it just blows up. And <laughs> it was very simple. But I, uh, I somehow got first first place. I don't know. A couple months ago, I was reminded about this Tamiya track vehicle. 
and the first thought I had was if I could fit a G.I. Joe on there, but it turned out to be obviously too small, but I, you know, I, to be honest, I didn't really remember how big this was until I got it, and I was like, oh, well, it's too small, but <laughs> I don't know, I was actually thinking about putting, you know, the styrene plastic over it and then putting the G.I. Joe on top of that, which, with these vintage G.I. Joes, style G.I. Joes, you can't do that, um, so I needed the platform, I needed these aluminum rods, uh, and, and just everything that's on here, the chair, everything. So for multiple, you know, like Cobby Lobby, eBay, um, and I guess that's about it for this, but it, it took time to research it and uh, put it all together, and I'm still working on it, so it's going to look cool when it's done. These past few weeks have been pretty fun. Just collecting and everything else I've talked about but there is a certain level of patience when it comes to ordering the stuff online um, nowadays it takes maybe longer for stuff to come in and and just finding all the pieces that I need when you're just making something out of scratch and even using action man stuff to fit in for GI Joe stuff which just guys looks pretty cool uh, he's the action man camp commander. I didn't even realize he talked. And what happened was he wasn't like this a couple minutes ago. So I was like, oh, he, he talks. So I, I pulled the dog tag and nothing happened. <laughs> now that string is just stuck there. So that's just another project that I have to fix. I don't know what's up with these, these uh, pull string repairs. And he's Action Man, which I'm not sure if he's if it's the same as G.I. Joe. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm I don't know. Just thinking about the research and trying to pull this guy apart is just mind boggling to me right now. And I'm really trying not to think about it. The main project is actually the world history timeline, the two step platforms, like uh the United States military history timeline. So that will be I'll be posting that video as soon as I can, so as soon as I can finish it. Thank you for watching this video on an update of current projects and new items. I'll be posting more videos soon. And right now, this guy totally forgot that they launched an astronaut in space a few months ago, and he's still out there. So, there was a reason why he was trying to get a hold of somebody, but he, he's been malfunctioning for some reason. Thanks again, and stay tuned. By the way, in the time it took to film this in the past couple of days, Our head scientist now has his twin engine motors.